Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Lee, and welcome back to Virtualization How To. Today we're diving into a hot topic in the virtualization landscape and technology landscape in general. In case you haven't heard, which is doubtful, VMware ESXi Free Edition is no longer available and many are searching for a free hypervisor solution that will allow them to not only experiment and run software and apps in their home lab environment, but also organizations worldwide are looking at their options following the Broadcom purchase of VMware and the absolutely tectonic massive changes that they have made and continue to make. In this episode, we're going to explore what I think are the best free hypervisors available for your home labs and for production outside of the VMware vSphere ecosystem. So stick around. So rest in peace, VMware ESXi Free Edition. Uh, it's definitely a, a virtualization hypervisor to remember. But let's now pivot to the topic at hand. Let's look at the first free hypervisor that you may not be familiar with. Well, first up is Nutanix Community Edition. Now, many do not realize this, but Nutanix has a free edition of its enterprise hypervisor that I have covered in a blog post recently. Uh, Nutanix Community Edition has very few limitations. Uh, in fact, way fewer limitations than VMware Free Edition. You can build up to a four node cluster with the free edition of Nutanix. And this is something you can sign up for and download for totally free. Also something that I wrote about recently that I, I feel is a key part of what you want to migrate to is that Nutanix has a move utility and that's what it's called the Nutanix move utility. And this Nutanix move utility is a great tool that has the enterprise polish as well. Uh, just like the hypervisor, you can simply add the source of your move and the destination of your move. And it has all the integration and automation that you would expect from and with VMware vSphere environments. And it allows you to move VMs flawlessly. Uh, in fact, it will automate the entire move process. It will uh, create the snapshots in VMware vSphere. It will pull the data over. Then it will automate the process of shutting down the source virtual machine and bringing up the target virtual machine inside of Nutanix. So uh, it has that automation. So that's something that you want to think about. Not only how awesome is the hypervisor that I want to go to, how easily can I get there? So it's a super slick solution, and I think it's a really great one to have on the list. Now, I know many may disagree with me to have a enterprise solution like Nutanix on the list. It's not free and open source. However, I think it's a really great solution to check out. And also, I think we will see huge adoption of Nutanix in the SMB and mid-market now with VMware going the way that it has. Um, so spinning up a Nutanix environment at home is going to be a great way to build skills with Nutanix. If you've never had your hands on it before, uh, getting that in your home lab and you can do that totally free. And the Nutanix move utility is also totally free. Well, next on the list, we have one that needs no introduction, and especially in the home lab community. It's Proxmox VE. Uh, Proxmox is a robust and very scalable solution that's built on the free and open source hypervisor kernel virtual machine or KVM. And it's gaining massive popularity for uh, the features, the capabilities, including clustering, live migration, failover, uh, snapshots. Uh, also with Proxmox, one of the cool things that you can do, and I've blogged about this uh, and created videos uh, about the free HCI solution called Ceph. And this integration is built right into the Proxmox interface. You can spin up a Ceph HCI cluster and it has all of those features built in so that you can run hyperconverged storage on top of your Proxmox cluster. Now, one of the hurdles I see with Proxmox, especially migrating virtual machines from VMware, is that there's not really a slick utility that is provided by Proxmox to do this. Uh, you'll see a lot of processes out there that are successful. However, you must export your virtual machines and VMware to OVF files. You've got to 
copy those OVF files over to your Proxmox server. You've got to run a, con a conversion of those disks before you spin those up as new virtual machines. Uh, so I love the solution. However, I, I do see that as a hurdle uh, when we look at just the pure context of migrating uh, virtual machines. It may not be for the faint of heart, uh, especially when I think about migrating dozens or even hundreds of virtual machines from VMware to Proxmox. Um, that is really going to be uh, tricky, especially for larger environments. However, again, it is a great solution uh, with uh, many great features, including a backup solution that comes along with the hypervisor that's a free download. So you can potentially go to a free hypervisor, free backup software, so you, you're not tied to an enterprise backup solution like we find ourselves being with the VMware vSphere ecosystem. Now, next on the list is XCPNG. Now, XCPNG is a really excellent free and open source project that was started in 2017 by a company called Vates. And I will say that XCPNG offers perhaps one of the most VMware-like management experiences. Uh, when you look at operations and how things are managed and carried out in VMware, XCPNG uh, really sticks closely with that management model. Uh, in fact, the company behind XCPNG, Vates, uh, they provide not only a hypervisor for free, but they provide this management appliance called Zen Orchestra. Now, Zen Orchestra, or XO for short, as you'll hear it referred to, it's very vCenter-like in its operation. Uh, and the capabilities that it provides for the environment. So you will stand up the hypervisor first, and then much like VMware vSphere, you're going to stand up your XO management appliance on top of the XCPNG host, and then it unlocks other features uh, that allow you to uh, do many really cool things if you're using this for a production environment. Now, one of the cool things that I think stands out about XCPNG uh, when compared to other solutions, as we've already mentioned, it has a built-in migration utility from VMware vSphere. So you can connect XCPNG or Zen Orchestra to your vCenter server. Then you can pull over those virtual machines that you want to migrate to your XCPNG environment and then literally power those up as new virtual machines inside of XCPNG. That's something that you can do much easier than you can migrating virtual machines uh, with Proxmox and its solution. And it has all the enterprise features that you would expect, built-in backup solution, just like Proxmox. So it's kind of an all-in-one, all-encompassing solution that I think is gonna be a great solution, not only for home lab environments, but also for production business organization uh, scenarios and the enterprise data center. Next on the list is Kubernetes-based hypervisors. Now, the world of Kubernetes-based hypervisors like Kubevert and one that is especially well-known, Rancher Harvester, uh, those solutions are, are emerging as a uh, hypervisor solution that many are giving serious attention to. And these platforms offer flexibility and innovation in handling virtual machines alongside containers, really in some ways better than the traditional hypervisors that we've seen in enterprise data center. However, one thing I will say about these is they still feel very new. Kubernetes, the underlying technology that powers Kubevert, is a technology that's still not well understood uh, in the enterprise by uh, traditional admins. And so that in itself is going to add a layer of complexity to that underlying solution for troubleshooting, for management, lifecycle management, et cetera. Going from where many are today with VMware vSphere, some of the more uh, traditional open source hypervisor solutions like uh, Proxmox, XCPNG, I think those are going to be safer options instead of diving off into Kubevert and Kubernetes-based virtualization. However, you guys may disagree with that, and, and please do in the comments let me know if you're seeing some really slick solutions out there utilizing the solutions based on Kubevert running on top of Kubernetes. The last solution that I want to mention is Vanilla KVM. So we've mentioned KVM-based distributions like Proxmox. Actually, Nutanix was originally built from 
KVM. Now, for those that prefer a straightforward approach, and you don't want to go with a prepackaged KVM like Proxmox or Nutanix or other KVM-based solutions, you can actually roll your own solution by simply just installing a Linux distro and then adding KVM to that Linux distro. So you could pick a, a distro like Ubuntu, Debian, or one of the others that you want to make use of with the solution, add KVM, and then you can start running virtual machines. But with something like this, you're not going to have all the built-in tools that you're used to with something like Proxmox on the free and open source side of KVM or Nutanix on the enterprise closed source side of KVM. Those are very slick. They've, they've got maturity. Uh, they have those uh, really nice bells and whistles that are already built in. So when you roll your own KVM and install that package, uh, you're going to not have a lot of those fancy tools and dashboards that you may be used to. Now, there are a lot of great open source solutions out there for dashboards and for other integrations with KVM. Don't get me wrong. However, just keep that in mind that it is something that uh, maybe will be a challenge as opposed to going with one of the pre-built KVM solutions. Well, keep in mind, these are only a few of the free hypervisor solutions out there. Uh, the community that I'm seeing and the conversations that I'm seeing happening uh, remains vibrant and everyone is, is being extremely resourceful as they look at options. So whether you're a veteran or new to the enterprise virtualization scene, there's no doubt a solution out there for you and for your organization. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights and tutorials. We've got a lot of great content coming your way. And join the conversation in our forums on the VHT forums on virtualization how to or in the comments for this video. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys on the next video.